welcome to the Mojo Hour Show. My name is Pamela Sullivan, the Mojo Maker, and I'm thrilled to be here another week with you to help spiral up the energy and what I call the mojo to help you live the iconic life you know that you can live. So welcome back. Now, today is a special show because one, I'm bringing back a couple of the elements that I had at the be- way back in the beginning of my show that I had to let go for a little bit, um, like the find of the week and the hot mojo tip at the end. But I also want to give a special shout out to, if you look in the background here and along the side of the wall, you'll see some prolific abstract paintings by a local artist by the name of Carolyn Sadowska. And Carolyn has blessed me with the use of her work to sort of raise the vibration of my show week to week. So next time you come, I'll have a new set of artwork to show. So you'll be able to find Carolyn when I post my my episodes. I'll have a link to Carolyn's beautiful website. All right. So let's get on with today's show because you know, ladies, how quickly the time goes on these Saturdays. Today shows how to raise the quality of your life. And this is something that I work with quite closely with my clients because It's about an energy. It's about a feel for who you are and how you represent yourself in the world, whether you're an entrepreneur or you are a stay-at-home mom or you are a career person working corporately or in the service industry or wherever you happen to find yourself. Because here's here's the thing, wherever you are, there you are. You don't just happen to be, well, I'm no longer on the job so I can do and be who I want to be at that time. And I'll explain this a little bit more as we go. But first, let's get on with the find of the week. Now, ladies, we are in that time of the year where the sun, especially in this western part of the world on this half of the hemisphere, the sun is at its zenith right now. So we're, I'm, I shouldn't be dating this, I think, but I, I'm trying to make a point. We love to be outside at this time of the year, no matter where you are on the planet, outside is a big thing. And the sun is there. And at this time of our life, ladies, when we're trying to alleviate signs of aging and spending copious amounts of money on all of those lotions and potions to turn back the time, the hands of the clock, the number one thing you need to be cognizant of is protecting your skin from the harmful rays of the sun. And the best way to do that are two ways. First, find yourself a really great sunscreen. I use this one because it doesn't leave that sort of white film on my skin because of the darker tone of my skin. I get this from Beauty Counter and it feels beautiful. It's like a moisturizer. And the next thing I do, actually there's three things. The next thing I do is I use a sun hat when I go outside. Of course, I'm not using one right now. And, or I use a beautiful parasol. This one is beautifully worn out because I've used it so much, but it not only is it stylish and pretty funky, but it also does the job of keeping the harmful rays of the sun off my skin. So, you know, that's the best way to fight the signs of aging and to stop yourself from wrinkling and getting that leathery look is to keep the sun off you as much as possible. Okay, a protect with a great layer of sunscreen, of quality sunscreen, not all of them are made equal. And you wanna make sure that they don't have all of these harmful chemicals and fillers in there. And sun protection, a hat, and or a great umbrella and get a few of them so they match your outfits and things like that. You might as well be stylish while you're doing the work of sun protection. All right, now let's move into our topic of the day, which happens to be how to raise the quality of your life. And in the work that I do working with women to, you know, create their personal brands and or as a confidence and courage mentor and executive coach, You know, getting into how we show up in life is a very important aspect. And I know a lot of people, we want to say they want to talk about their inner life. They're all about how they feel and how they love and connect to the greater and general public. And I'm totally on with that, of course. But we live in a society and a world, even for ourselves, that we see and react to things first. We snack with our eyes first. Do we not? As much as we want to believe we are those people that just want to connect to the inner icon or the inner divinity of other people, we can't help but see things first. We see how other people show up in the world, do we not? What about yourself? 
Have you done an audit on yourself to discover how you're showing up every day? Because how you show up speaks volumes to other people, especially if you are an entrepreneur. A lot of entrepreneurial women run into this trap thinking that, well, I'm not on the clock right now, or it's the weekend, or I'm finished for the day, so I can do whatever I want. Fine, we all have the, the, um, the, the choice to do whatever we want in life. Of course, I'm not here to tell you what you shouldn't or shouldn't do, but I would like you to consider you are your brand. All right, this thing or whatever service or product you're selling is not your brand. You are the brand. People want to feel comfortable from the person that they're doing business with or the person that they're saying yes to and handing money over to. There's a certain aura and essence that is important for people to get a certain level of comfort around. And that is about the quality, the quality of the energy and the quality of the messaging and the branding that you're bringing about. I know we talk about branding in the world of business as your the colors you're choosing, the website you're building, your messaging, your tagline, all of these are part and parcel of your business brand, but you are a full-time brand 24 seven when you, come into your home, what does your environment look like? What type of space are you putting and building around yourself? And when you leave your home, going to the grocery store, going to the car wash, rocking around the block, what are you telling the world about how you choose to show up? And I'm not you know, advocating that you need to run out and buy a million dollar wardrobe and always have your hair and makeup on 24 seven. I don't have my hair and makeup on 24 seven, of course not, but I do, take a moment to make sure that I'm tidy and I'm representing myself well because you don't know who you're going to run into at any moment. So there are three questions that I ask my clients and I think that I can sort of, you know, uh, trim down to suit this occasion so anybody can partake and to, to open up your awareness to what it is that you're doing and how you're moving and shaking out into the, the world. So let's get to the first question, okay? First one being, are you true to your brand or story? So let's just say that you are not a business, you're not an entrepreneur, you have your regular, you know, job that you go to every single day. But when you walk into your place of employment, you are telling a story. What is the story? Is the story is I'm, I couldn't care to be here? What's that look on your face? What is your body language? saying to all those around you and most importantly to your employer what is it you're saying by how you hold yourself very important how do you show up to work i know every place of business has a culture a business culture it might be a little bit more relaxed business business casual might be the call of the day or you might have to be a little bit more formal if you're in the banking industry for instance but for the most part it's usually business casual but business casual does not mean schleppy and I think a lot of people have fallen into that category where they just throw on anything. They don't even bother to really comb their hair and they've got flip flops, flops, flip flops on or running shoes and off they go. Now, yes, maybe the crowd and the masses in your, that business culture might be wearing these things. But what does that have to specifically do with you as a brand? Because when people are making business decisions or promotional decisions, they're looking for people who have put some thought into their brand. And branding is just as important in the inside of a career as it is on the outside of a career in an entrepreneurial forum. And sometimes even more so, because you are competing with a whole lot of people who are as good as you are, or even better. And now that we are in the world where we are connected globally, you are competing with people who are on the other side of the planet and they are connected through technology and they are now part of the, 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 the crowd that you have to navigate and maneuver through. So these little points and edges you can you have control over, but are you taking control of these things or it doesn't matter to you to just show it up any old how? Is that the story that you wish for people to hear from you? It, it's not about the words that you speak. And I think a lot of people confuse that. So does your brand say, I've got this, I'm reliable, I'm trustworthy, I'm in the game, I'm ready to go to work, I'm, you know, you can, you can depend on me, or is it saying, 
I don't care enough about myself. So chances of me caring about you is pretty slim to none. And that's how people will read it. That's how I read it. I always look for the most together person in any circumstances. Now, it doesn't mean that they are a better person, but it does mean that they took a moment. So if they're going to take a moment with themselves, more than, more than likely they're to take a moment with the business at hand. And I'm, that, that's very important for me. All right. We spend a lot of time earning our money. We don't just want to give it away to people who don't who have an air or a, or a, an attitude about that that says, I don't care. And a lot of the style that's out there says eh, it doesn't matter. And, you know, I know we live in a time that's very difficult for a lot of people. There's a lot of high anxiety. And depression and I totally understand that this is a lot of the energy that we're dealing with but one of the ways to help alleviate that is get up and take care of what you can take care of and and this environment called you is something that's under your soul control so why not take care of it we can't do anything about anybody else even those closest to us they have their own mind and their own way of doing things but you have control of you this is your brand this is your story Start with her hair. Do you need to change your hair? Have you changed your hair in the last two decades or not? What about maybe getting some fresh makeup? If that's a problem due to budget, how about maybe straightening out your wardrobe and, and taking out things that are shoddy and, and worn out? And you, you know, you can you can revive yourself just with a few fresh pieces. Whether you buy them retail or you go and get them secondhand and you take really good care of them and you brighten up your look and you stand straight and you put a smile on your face, all of a sudden you have a renewed sense of being that other people quickly notice and pick up on and they wonder what is going on with this person. All right, if you really want to be seen, take care of your brand, which is your personal brand, your personal story, your personal energy. You want to raise your energy? Start moving, eat better, drink water, supplement, do whatever you need to do to raise that energy, to get your mojo flowing. And I talk about this a lot. If you've watched any of my past episodes, it's all about how to raise that energy because it's all about energy. Let's not fool ourselves about this. We might buy a new car, a new house, take vacations. It's all about shifting the energy so we have a different experience and feel better about ourselves and our lives, is it not? Why do you buy these things or invest in these things? Because you want to feel a particular way. Experiences are wonderful for that. So find out how you can enact or get involved in experiences that will help raise the quality of your life. It you wouldn't believe how simple you can make this. It doesn't have to be, you know, the next grand European vacation, or you don't have to go off to Machu Picchu, even though that's a great energy shifter as well. But you can even vacation in the town that you live in, find new ways to do things, visit new um, locations in your city, try new restaurants, try new theaters, go for a walk in places you haven't walked before, stop and notice what's going on around you for a change as opposed to leave work straight home or straight to the grocery store and boom right in front of the TV until the next day and you do this over and over and over again. Right? A lot of the issues that we have with our life is through hab the uh, habituation of our lives without breaking out of that concretized mold. I love that word concretized. You'll hear me say it a lot. But out of that concretized mold in which we have in um, sort of captured ourselves, All right? we become prisoners of our own habits. So yes, we start to schlep about, we throw on the, the sweatpants and the sweatsuits and we don't comb our hair or whatever it is that we do because that's how we feel inside. What is going on in the inside flies out to the outside and under our awareness. Right? When I'm working with women, especially women who are looking to go to the next level in their careers, maybe into the C-suite and above, this is an area I talk about. Right? It's, this, is the, this is a huge component of the confidence building piece. Let's work on your personal brand. What is it? Maybe we need to really work on your style. Maybe we need to get you into some more quality clothing quality shoes, quality accessories, get a fresh um, quality haircut, all of it. It all speaks to the quality and the essence, the up-leveled essence of your life. And once you make a move to do that, you'll notice all of a sudden things around you start to shift too. So try it. Make an audit of yourself because sometimes 
these are blind spots in your life and you can't see what is happening and that's why it takes another pair of eyes to help you see it this is, this is why i love working with women i will mention or say something to them and it's like brand new news or information to them and they've lived with this every day but they can't see it there are things about myself that i can't see that i i need the other set of eyes to point out to me and it's not about trying to avoid criticism i want someone to tell me when i need to to, to straighten some things out and it will shift my energy Okay, so take an audit of your, your external set of extent, um, circumstances, the environment in which you call home, all right, all of this that you're living in, and this is another place in which you live and breathe and have your being, your, your body, and the things and the quality of the items in which you place on this sacred being, okay? So make sure you do that. And now, I also ask my clients, how are you properly aligning to your message one of the things that i help my clients with is to create a personal branding bible what that means is that we not only take care of the usual things like colors and 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 uh, bios and all of it but the message that they speak when someone meets them for the first time right people trip over this. When people ask, well, what is it that you do? They go on and on and on ad nauseum about trying to explain it to the other person, which all that means is that you don't know what your message is. And it's quite harmful to your brand because people want to know succinctly who you are and what you're about. Right? They don't want the story just yet. They will ask for the story if your message is catchy enough and maybe even quirky enough and different enough that they want to engage in a further conversation with you. So this, again, this is not just for entrepreneurs. This is for you as well. Even if you are just working nine to five or whatever your hours happen to be. So if I meet you for the first time and I say, so, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. What are you going to say? Most people give me the label. I'm a lawyer. I'm a doctor. I'm an accountant. Well, that tells me how you earn money, which is not really what I asked you. But you see, this is how we've been prepared in the world. We have to give people our job title first, right? Because that seems to set up a whole litany of information, right? But that's not really what I want to know. What I would like to know is, who are you? Because even if you were no longer in those labeled positions, who would you be in the world? That is your message. And that's something else I work with my clients with, either on the personal branding side or on the mentoring and coaching side, because this is important, because when you discover your purpose and mission statement for your life, you can plug it in anywhere and feel empowered about that message, right? You want to ensure that you truly understand why you're here and what you're doing. So many people ask that age old question, why, why am I here and what am I supposed to be doing? You might be showing up everywhere working religiously, but it really and truly doesn't meet the need of your mission and your vision and your values. It's just a way that you trigger cash to come into your life so you can keep the roof over your head and food in your belly. It has nothing to do with your personal mission. And this is so important. This is something else that raises the quality of your life. When you are on purpose about something in your life, the energy and quality changes and shifts. For instance, let's just say you're working um, as an accountant. You're busy doing your accountant job. You know, you're, you're, you're fairly content in that, but you've had this sort of uncomfortable, discordant feeling within you that, yeah, this is fine. It, you know, it pays the mortgage, but do I really want to do this the rest of my life? I'm, I'm not really feeling it. And I hear this conversation a lot. I've had people leave high powered jobs uh, while they were working with me because they truly can't face it one more day and they were making big money that was my story i walked away from a big paying job to to revamp my life and everybody freaked out when i did it i under i understand why there's we, we need that sense of safety and security around us where are we going to sleep what are we going to eat i get it but what was even more important to me and those women that shifted their life out of those high paying jobs what was even more important to them about the quality of their life was the happiness and joy factor and whether or not they wanted to get up one more day and step out the side one more day to do that thing one more day. And I came to a point in my life where I said, I can't do it one more day. 
And that's how I managed to shift my life. Now, I don't advocate for everybody because not everyone's going to be able to handle that. But it was how I had to go. But it shifted the quality of my life. And I am so blessed to have listened to that call and made that move because I wouldn't be here on the show with you today doing what I do, what I love to do for people and, and, and hold them in service with people if I didn't make that move. So the quality of my life is about the energy of my life. There's no complaining about this or complaining about that. I used to be the biggest complainer because I gave my energy away to another source. Yeah, I paid a couple of bills, right? But it didn't raise my mojo factor. And that's more important to me than anything else. And this is what needs to be important to you as well, raising that energy. All right, so are you living your message? Do you know what your message is? If you need some help with that, the first place to go, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this out right now, is to visit my uh, resource site, mojoresources.ca, and download the vision kit there. That's a place to start, and ask, it starts asking you some powerful questions to get the juices rolling and to where to, where to start with this process, okay? So the, the third question is, uh, what can and will you gain? by living your truth. And I'm gonna pop in with the first answer that comes to my mind, and that's freedom. Yes, we still have to live within the constraints of our society and we have to follow the laws of the land and, and do all the things that we need to do. But there's a sense of abiding freedom that comes with the choice of living your truth. My truth was doing the work that I'm doing now as the Mojo Maker. I'm a highly creative being and I love to let that loose. Where I was decades ago, it was containered and the lid was shut down and I was slowly dying. And I actually was physically wasting away where I ended up in the hospital many times and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. That's what was wrong with me. There was a lid on my energy and my process and my creativity and my mojo couldn't fly free. So freedom is a huge value point for me. All right. It may not be yours, but to me it was. And this is why, this is what I gain from living my truth. And there are other things that you will gain from living your truth. The quality of your life ratchets up. All right. Your vibe raises and it starts to attract into your life what it is that you need. There are things that you need that you don't even know you need, but once your energy shifts, things start happening. We call it coincidence. We, we call it all kinds of things, even miracles if you want. And I don't want to go all sort of strange on you here. We call that strange when we start putting that, that kind of language. But your life starts to align to purpose. See, I want to sell it there for a second because I just want you to truly understand what it is I'm saying here. We let the majority of our life filter away because we just won't align and live our truth. And you know, on social media, we talk about authenticity. It's so ubiquitous now as if everybody even understands what that actually means. If every one of us was to actually live um, true to ourselves, it'd be a mess. That's why we really don't do it for social purposes, for one thing, <laughs> right? There are only a few people in your life, actually, that you will be yourself with because there's a sense of safety that they're not gonna go out and throw you under the bus with what they know about you. Because you have your bright, beautiful, joyful self and you have your shadow side that you would give your life for, for no one to, to know about, I'm sure. And there are only a few people in your life that actually should know that about you. It's not something that needs to be on social media. Although I see people trying to do that. All right, so be a purveyor of the quality of your life. Raise the quality of your life. You know, you're going to go off and say, oh, some woman on something called the Mojo Hour show said to raise the quality of my life. Yes, I advocate raising the quality of your life. And you can do this in baby steps. If it, all it means is changing your hair, getting some good makeup, drinking more good water, and taking a walk every day, it's a start. Maybe it's about making up-level choices for your life because you've only got one choice. And I work with ladies that are in the second half of their life and have gone through the messy middle and are asking now what? They have all of this energy, knowledge, and wisdom, but what are they going to do with it? All right. So they need a little bit of what I call handling. And then they're off to the races. 
they say I've changed their life. No, they were ready to change. I was just there to provide the resources and tools for them to do that. So what about you? Showing up to hear these episodes week after week is a great way to start that process because I'm going to come with interesting stories for you and metaphors for you and tools for you to start acting, making those quality changes that will raise the vibration in and of your life. And when you see people walking down the street and you wonder, hey, what's going on with them? It's because this is what they're doing. They won't tell you, but they're making quality choices. They're not shopping. I like that word. I'm not sure if I need to be using it, but I love it because it evokes an image in my mind about less than stellar, right? You don't have to be around running around in designer labels, but take care. This is you. This is, this is a sacred thing. You, you're a sacred thing. And it's easy to differentiate yourself from people in the crowd these days because not many people put an effort into their being, into their internal energy and to their outward appearance. Doesn't take much. So I just want to leave that there with you. These are the, the three questions to ask yourself about raising the quality of your life. So you know what time it is now, right? It's time for the Hot Mojo Tip. So let me... Okay, this is a little bit of a long one, so hang in there for a second. It says, invite better things into your life. You'll immediately feel a shift. Everything feels elevated. Abundance begins to flow to you. The way you treat yourself is a conversation with the universe. So without even using your voice, how you feel and how you show up expresses to life who you are and, wh and what you are are ready to receive. Right, think about that across the week. You might even want to write this down. Let me, let me just invite better things into your life. Learn to invite better things into your life. And it, it, it sort of even fits well with today's topic. Inviting better things into yourself is also another way to ratchet up the quality of your life. So you can find me at Mojo Research resources.ca or at PamelaSilver.com. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you will truly begin to spiral up the rest of your week. See you again. Bye-bye.